morning, friends, and welcome to Pataskala United Methodist Church. I am Nikki Baker. I'm the pastor here, and we are so glad that you could be with us on this very fall morning. Um, before I turn it over to my cohort in crime, Leanne, I would like to welcome home from their honeymoon. <laughs> I, I would like to welcome Megan and Matthew Harvey. Okay, Liam, go right ahead. Okay. Cohort in crime is ready to speak. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I have several announcements this morning to make. Um, Sunday night is King's Club. Programming for grades 1 through 5 starts at 5 o'clock p.m. and grades 6 through 12 join them for dinner at 545. Programming for older kids starts after dinner and goes until 7 o'clock. Yes? Not tonight, it's Halloween. Oh, it's changed for Halloween? Well, what's that and what's it texted me? There's okay. We're not doing it at all? No. Okay. All right, then King's Club is not happening this evening because Trick or Treat is happening in Pataskala this evening. My apologies, I missed that. Okay. Second announcement. Thursday night play group for our pre-kindergarten and kindergartners is from 6 to 7 o'clock p.m. downstairs in the nursery room in the adjoining room. And if any of you are not signed up to receive our church mail notifications, the email, but you'd like to be, please email the church office with your name and email information so that Sarah can add you to our list. Our November, December newsletter was emailed out on Thursday. There are several hard copies on the counter in the welcome area for those who want them. The newsletters have the calendar of events List of devotional book we'll be following together for Advent and all the fun activities and mission opportunities for the holiday season. And I do believe there are going to be many. <laughs> if you have prayer requests for our weekly prayer email, please send them to Sarah via email by Monday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. Please stand if you are able and join me in reading the parts marked all. Come into the land of God. We come seeking the land of love. Live as the people of Christ. We gather to grow as a community of love. Follow in the ways of the Lord. We move forward on the path of love. Come, young and old, friend and foreigner, for all are welcome here. We come to live and grow in the love of Christ. Praise God for this wonderful gift. Shall we pray? O oh God, you are our God, and we welcome you as your people on the earth. Gather us in that we may remember the ties that bind us together in your love. Write your law upon our hearts that others may find us to be generous and loving friends. Strengthen us by your spirit that we may live in love, a love that transforms our lives even as we help to transform the lives of others. In the hope of your miraculous love, we pray. Amen.
That was awesome. <laughs> you may be seated. Our first lesson this morning is from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem and Judah went to live in the country of Moab. He and his wife had two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malin and Chilion. They were Ephraphites from Bethlehem and Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These, two Moabite, these took Moabite wives. The name of one was Orpha, and the name of the other Ruth. When they had, li when they had lived there about ten years, both Malin and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So he set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than, than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpha kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from you following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. There I will be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. Message. You want to come with me? Over here? All right, let's sit down. Here, can you tell everybody your name? I know you want to play. Can you say, brother? Jameson, thank you. Come over here. Say good morning, everyone. Do you want to? You want to go with Miss Nikki? Come on up here. Go on with Miss Nikki then. <laughs> okay. See, this is why he's not ready for children's most quite yet. Do you want to tell everyone your name? Sleepy bird. No, you're not sleepy bird. That's his costume. Say. You're Jameson. No, I'm not Jameson. I'm Sweetie Bird. <laughs> What's your name? This is Emerson. And Baby Bird. It's Baby Bird. <laughs> and how old are you? I'm, I'm, I'm Sweetie Bird. 
Bye. Okay. Well, he's in character today. So, do you remember what we did last week at Playgroup when we talked about how each of us are a gift from God? Yeah? Okay, so we're going to talk about a story. So, in the Bible, there is this man named Jonah, and he gets swallowed by a big whale. Do you remember that story? Jonah gets swallowed by a big whale, and he stays inside for three days. A big whale. A big whale. <laughs> and he stays inside for more than three days because he didn't listen to what God told him to do. Yeah, because remember, we got to make good choices and listen with our ears. Okay, we will in a minute. Um, no, no, we got to listen with our ears. And Jonah didn't listen and he ran away from God, so he got swallowed by a big whale for three days. And then he prayed to God and asked him for forgiveness, and then the whale spit him out. Oh, baby. Oh. And then Jonah ran and did what God wanted him to do. Don't touch that. So this week, that's what we're going to learn about. We're going to learn about Jonah and the whale. Do you want to pray with me? No. <laughs> I do miss you. I want to pray with you. All right. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the mouth of babes, Lord. We just continue to love and cherish everyone that is here this morning. And we continue to ask for the blessings upon them that they have a safe Halloween. In Jesus' name, we all said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, oh. Say <laughs> <laughs> hey, bye, everyone. Bye. Friends, um, I, I'm sorry, Sean, I was going to give you a little segue. Friends, this morning, um, Sean has an extended um, special piece for us. So I would just encourage you to open your ears, but also open your mind and let yourselves be transported and transformed through the music this morning. Thank you in advance, Sean.
myself and I tried, I tried to stuff it down, I really did. <laughs> so here's what you all need to understand. There's a little story behind this. And the story is this. Today is Reformation Sunday. And I am a pastor who, I love formation and I love the understanding that God is reforming us through the gift of Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit more and more every day. And so every year on Reformation Sunday, I ask Sean to play this piece. And he says, again. <laughs> and I say, but Sean, I only want you to do it once a year. He's like, yeah, but it's the same one. And uh, so he told me no this year. And I was sad. And then he surprised me <laughs> with that. <laughs> So you will have to excuse me if I am a little tearful because let me just say, I was being reformed in that song. That was amazing. Will you pray with me? God, we come to you this morning as your faithful people who do our best on the daily to be obedient, to have open ears and open eyes and open hearts. And God, we do our best. And sometimes it's easy to follow. And sometimes it's not. And sometimes we fail miserably and we lose our way. But God, we are confident that in all of our doings, in all of our striving, that you stay with us. Because as many times as we are reformed, God, you are a mighty fortress. And your love for us is steadfast always. Thank you, God, for the gift of your grace, for the gift that is given to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, and for the power of your Holy Spirit that leads and guides us every day. <clears throat> God, we come before you today also recognizing that there are needs that though we try and though we strive, we cannot meet them all. But God, we ask for your guidance, your leadership, your resources, your provision, and most of all, for your encouragement to help us move. To help us see the needs. And to move us to compassion towards our brothers and sisters everywhere. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would be with those who are far off for those who are near but feel far away, for those who need healing, comfort, grace, and peace, and for all your people everywhere. Lord, hear our voices as one body, one people, as we pray the prayer your son taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to... I apologize, it was my intention to leave that on the whole time, but I am sweating. <laughs> and you're going to see drips come out my mask. The gospel lesson this morning, which I would ask you to please rise for the reading of our gospel, <laughs> is from the gospel of Mark, chapter 12 verses 28 to 34. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another and seeing that he answered them well, he asked them, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered. The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the, with all the heart and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> so, this morning our gospel lesson has a scribe interacting with Jesus. So I thought it would be important for us to know who are the scribes. What do you think of when you think of a scribe? Someone who does what? Writes. Okay. And so the scribes would have been very familiar with the law. As a matter of fact, the scribes were a group of people who were probably, not all, but most were Pharisees. And they were the ones uh, who, in different translations, are also called the teachers of the law. So they would have been the ones who were most familiar with the law and its approved interpretations. They emphasized the traditions especially. They had great respect for the law, 
And they denied Jesus' authority to reinterpret the law because if they reinterpreted it, if Jesus reinterpreted it, then he was, in a way, thumbing his nose at tradition, right? So they denied Jesus' authority because he was reinterpreting the law away from older traditions, and they denied his authority because he also didn't hold to these strict traditions. So in the scripture today, in this gospel lesson today, what is interesting is that after the scribe asks Jesus the question, what is the most important commandment? Jesus answers, the first is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart and your soul and your mind and your strength, essentially Love God with everything you've got and everything you are. And to love your neighbor as yourself. For the scribe to say, you are right. Now, one of my favorite TV shows that Matt and I used to watch was this show that was on I get 80s Matt 90s we don't know we're we're old enough we don't remember and I know you guys are gonna say oh hush (laughs) but I don't remember it was like sometime in the 90s probably it was called Matt about you Helen Hunt and Paul Reiser, see, you guys know this song. This is a good show, right? Well, there was one episode, like they, they would have these arguments. And there was one episode where she got to put, they both put on these virtual reality glasses. And um, they got to live in this virtual, like, the, I don't know, a dream or something, a virtual reality. And, and in, I think it was in his dream, I can't remember which whose dream it was, but their dream was that the other one would come up to them and say, you were right and I was wrong. (laughs) His dream. Was that you, Mary? (laughs) Definitely his dream. That's awesome. So... But this fantasy of the other coming up and saying, you were right, I was wrong. Imagine this scribe who is part of an order of the elite and the well-respected, he had a place in society, coming to Jesus and saying, You were right. And the implied is, I was wrong. Mm. But see, with the scribe, it wouldn't just be, I was wrong, would it? For the scribe to say this to Jesus, he would have been saying, You were right, we were. Are wrong. How hard is it to admit that we're wrong? It's very difficult. And if we're part of a larger group and we realize our wrongness, then when we say, I was wrong, there's an implication on the group that I was with, right? And so that group might exclude me because I had betrayed them, correct? Association. Association. Yes. And so the first thing the scribe was doing was he was admitting not only that he was wrong, 
but that he was part of a group that was also wrong. Ooh, that's kind of rough. But the second thing is that the scribe calls Jesus teacher. Now, when you call someone teacher, it means that you respect what they're teaching. As an adult, when you address someone as teacher, it is a term of respect, and it is a term of I don't know what word I'm looking for. Identification. That they do what their title says. So that would mean the scribe is accepting what Jesus is putting out there. Honor. Honor. Thank you, Dan. See, this is what happens when you sit closer. <laughs> Are you feeling that, Ed? Good, that's good. Friends, my friend uh, Ed and his wife are here. He's, I, I, I have to back up just a minute and, and talk about this because Ed was the first person I met in seminary. And I knew I was in the right place when Ed sang because I was terrified my first day, but I sat next to Ed, and when he sang, I knew I was home. So the Pharisee and the scribe, for them to acknowledge Jesus as teacher, as the person who was educating them, that would have been a big deal, right? That would have been a huge big deal. And Jesus' response to just that small statement of the scribe to say, the teacher of the law to say, indeed, you are right. Jesus says, you are not far from the kingdom of God. So yes, not yesterday, uh, Friday, I traveled to Cincinnati to see a good friend of mine. And it was gray and it was rainy all day Friday. As a matter of fact, it was a pretty stinky day to drive. It was yucky. 71 is straight and flat. And frankly, it's boring. <laughs> and I was by myself in the car. And as I got closer to Cincinnati, you know how when your GPS is uh, driving you down the road, it follows the arrow, so you see the arrow moving, and you see like Cincinnati's getting really close, and you get a little excited, and then when you get to Cincinnati, it does a farther out view, and it readjusts, and then you're farther away from the place you thought you were going again. Isn't that like a really depressing moment in your GPS driving? Well, I think that that might have been what it was like. The GPS, as I got closer, readjusted to this closer view. And once again, it felt like I had actually traveled far, but then I was even farther away. I want you to think about our other lesson this morning from the book of Ruth. I want you to consider from the point of Naomi. Remember, Naomi was a woman who was Hebrew. And she started out living her life in Bethlehem of Judea. But at the time, there was a famine in the land of Bethlehem in Judea. And Naomi's husband, Elimelech, said, there's a famine, it's going to be bad, peace, we're out. 
And so he gathered up his family, and they moved to Moab. Well, we're a society who moves around a lot. Not a big deal, right? Okay, now, I want you to back this truck up a minute. And I want you to think about all of your kids and belongings, not in boxes and not with a moving truck, but on your back, in your arms, and with donkeys and camels. What do you think? No, thank you. No, thank you. Right? Now, mind you, they probably didn't have all the things that we have, but still a difficult move. Now, I want you to think about this. They weren't going a town over. The distance was roughly a little under 2,000 miles. Remember, camels and donkeys. And a backpack. Okay? So this was a distance. So once they got there, they lived in this land, but Elimelech died. So Naomi now has her two sons, Malon and Kilion. Malon and Kilion are old enough to wed, and they are not in their own land in Bethlehem of Judea. And so they had no other way of doing things but to take Moabite wives. Well, mm, the Moabites did not worship God. The Lord your God is one. They worshiped many gods. And so they married women who worshiped other gods. Now remember, their dad isn't with them. He has passed away. And so it is Naomi who is over the household, kind of holding it down. Although the, the sons are the ones in charge. And so they take these wives. Well, they, they don't conceive children right away. And soon after, the two sons pass away. And now, Naomi is left 2,000 miles away from home. Remember? Camel, donkey, backpack. Okay? 2,000 miles from home. And what she has is no sons to provide for her. No job, because that's not what women did. No property, because they were in a foreign land. And she also has has two daughters-in-law who are also women and mouths to feed. Imagine what Naomi might have been feeling. And I think at some point, Naomi realized just how far from home she was. She realized, maybe, how far from God she had gone. And so Naomi decided to go back to Bethlehem. But there were some serious obstacles for Naomi. One, the distance. To travel 2,000 miles, remember, donkey camel, backpack, to travel 2,000 miles alone as a woman was unthinkable. Arduous. Arduous. Dangerous physically to her. Not only that, but Naomi had gone from her homeland to Moab. She had left her people because her husband wanted a better life for them, and he left their people. So to go back 
would also be the possibility of rejection. So there was a physical danger. There was a psychological danger that she might be rejected. She had no provision, so maybe, maybe there was just a donkey and not a camel. She had no provision. She had no way to take care of herself. So there's a sociological danger because there was no other way to live but either to beg, rely on the goodness of others, and she had left them during a time of need, so would they take her in? And then the fourth obstacle is that Naomi had lived in Moab, where they worshipped many gods, and so she had been polluted religiously. So there are four barriers. There is the physical barrier, the psychological barrier, the sociological barrier, and the religious barrier. And yet Naomi knew that the only way out of her situation was through those four barriers. And so she chose to return. She told her daughters-in-law, you know, you're young, you don't have any kids, you can go back to your father's houses or your mother's houses and you can have a new husband and you can uh, produce offspring and live a good life. So go do that, I release you. And Orpah went. She kissed her mother-in-law goodbye and she went. But Ruth, Ruth chose to follow. And you may wonder why. Why did Ruth choose to go with Naomi, though there were these four obstacles that were nearly insurmountable? Why would Ruth choose to go? She wanted to know this God that Naomi would return to even though she could die trying, even though she could be rejected when she went back to her people, by her people, even though she had no way to provide for herself, and even though people may have seen her as religiously polluted, Ruth wanted to know, who is this God? And the only person she knew who knew this God was leaving. And so Ruth chose to follow. Now, I'm making an assumption, which is kind of rough, but I'm doing it anyway. Yeah. If you're here this morning, you have somehow been called here. Or maybe you just showed up and you don't know why. <laughs> Either way, you were obedient. Whether you're here in person or whether you're here online, it doesn't matter. You followed and you were obedient to the call. There are always obstacles in our way. Our obstacles may Generally, for us, they don't cause us physical danger, though being in a room with people might. I see that everyone in here has a mask on today. I'm very grateful. I'm the only outlier. A psychological danger is that your friends might say, why would you go to church? Why would you sit in an old building 
with people and worship a God who seems so far away in a pandemic. Maybe there's also a sociological danger. What could the church do for me? Or maybe there's a danger religiously that we've been polluted by, I don't know what, you name it, television, radio, film, society in general, stepping out your front door. There are still dangers for us when we choose to come and worship the Lord our God who is one. And yet you have all showed up. All of us have shown up this morning. What can we learn from the Gospel of Mark today and the story of Ruth and Naomi. Jesus told the scribe, you are not far from the kingdom of God. You are not far from the kingdom of God. Even though our GPS when we came here, might have readjusted to look like we're still really far away, we can hear Christ saying to us, you are not far from the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, we love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And we love one another as ourselves. Each day that we open our minds, our eyes, our hearts to hear and see where God is calling us, and each day that we do our best to respond in grace, we are not far from the kingdom of of God. We can't climb in on our own. We like to try. But we get there only by obedience, only by love. And this is the good news, my friends, that God loves us so much that he gave us his only begotten son who already did the climbing for us. Amen. This morning, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, I have a response to the word for you today. It's kind of like um, just a way for us to respond to God's word. So it'll come up on the screen and um, we can do that together. Love God with all your heart and mind and soul and strength. Love God your neighbor as yourself with kindness and care. We love, God and love, love yourself with gentleness, with mercy, and with grace. We love, God and love, Thanks be to God. Today is the last Sunday here at PUMC to participate in our Socktober mission. And I know you've been sitting out there wondering why she has socks. 
on the pulpit. This is why I wanted to remind myself. Today is the last day of Socktober. Um, socks that you donate to Socktober go uh, to all of the area um, shelters or wherever we find a need. Uh, the places you can put these socks are in the bins in the welcome area outside, right under a thing that says Mission Collection. There's a bin that says Socktober. You can put your socks in there. I want to let you know that uh, November's mission, we will be doing uh, what we have done every year here for quite some time, is we will be filling grocery bags to help the Leeds Pantry give out full Thanksgiving meals to those in our community who are needing assistance with a Thanksgiving meal. So we will have grocery bags with lists available next Sunday. You can drop off the filled bags to, there will be a table in the Narthex and in Beeson where you can drop those off. And uh, those are due by Sunday, November 22nd. And then after church on the 22nd, we'll drop those bags off to Leeds. We, all that we think is ours is already yours, generous God. And it is our joyful act of worship to offer our gifts to you in thanksgiving. If you're new here, there's no pressure to give. If you're a follower of Christ and you want to contribute to the mission and ministry of the church, you can place your tithes in the offering boxes that are by both doors as you leave. If you're online, you can give online at P-U-M-C, PataskalaUMC.org. Will you pray with me? With open hands and thankful hearts, we offer our gifts to you, God, as a token of our gratitude and a reflection of our devotion. Multiply these gifts that they may surpass what we could do alone. To your glory, God. Amen. Would you please rise for our Walk in the way of Christ. Walk in the way of love, extending grace to all. May the God who knows the desires of our hearts be with you today and always, guiding you and encouraging you in his steadfast love. Amen.